Hello everybody, Ace here and welcome to another collection video. Today we'll be going over the Sega Genesis. Now if you had any sort of doubt about which of the 16-bit consoles is my favorite, take a look at my Super Nintendo collection video before you watch this. First off, I'm going to get the obvious ones out of the way. Of course I have Sonic 1. Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles with its patented lock-on technology, Sonic 3D Blast, Sonic Spinball, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which I don't count as a Sonic game because Sonic's actually not in this game, but some people do, I don't know. And last but not least, Sonic Wacky Worlds, or sorry, Sega Club Wacky Worlds Creativity Studio, which is Sega's answer to Mario Paint. And I actually want to open this up just to show off because not only does this have the book, the game, game, there's the cartridge, but it also has the barely used Sega Mega Mouse. And the cool thing about it is it actually has three different buttons for A, B, and C, and then the start button here. And this is obviously before Laser Mouse, so it's a trackball. Um, it also comes with a cool uh, Sega Mega Mouse mouse pad, but I don't have that here because I'm actually using that as my mouse pad at work and everyone thinks I'm a huge dork because of that. But I don't care. No one has a mouse pad that's as cool as mine. All right, and moving on to the non-Sonic games. Strap in folks because this may take a while. One of my favorite racing games on the Sega Genesis, Road Rash 3, which Road Rash is a franchise that I really wish would come back. Um, though, even as I say that, there's a game on Steam called Road Redemption, and it is a great spiritual successor to Road Rash. It's a lot of fun, and I really suggest you checking it out. There's one that I picked up just recently from a going out of business sale, uh, Marble Madness, which I didn't even know they made it on a Genesis version. Um, so I definitely plan on playing this on the channel sometime soon, so keep an eye out on that. Another recently purchased is the Adventures of Mighty Max, voiced by Rob Paulson, which he's not voiced by Rob Paulson in the game because there's no voice samples. But it's an interesting like action platformer. Um, I've tried playing it a little bit. I can't quite get the hang of it. Um, but one thing of note is the copy I have actually has a book. The book's still in it. And in the back, it's actually a pretty cool uh, comic showing off an adventure of Mighty Max that kind of leads up to the beginning of the game. So this is a neat little ad addition to the game. Up next I have Caesar's Palace, which I guess is licensed by the actual uh, Vegas Casino. I like how my uh, camera is focusing on this chick's face here for face recognition. Anyway, uh, this game, if, if you need a gambling fix, um, I guess check this out, but it's really no frills, it's just some, uh, it's just some random casino games. Uh, there's like literally nothing else to do other than just try and get as much money as possible. And there's no other people, it's all dead, you're just one guy wandering around this empty casino. It's kind of, it's kind of sad, really, I mean. But anyway, I mean, if you need a gambling fix, it's got lots of games. It's got uh, video poker, video poker, blackjack, slot machines, roulette, craps, kino, horse racing, and scratchers, which a lot of these in video game form really don't even make any sense. But anyway, up next is an interesting EA game called General Chaos. I definitely plan on doing a playthrough with uh, Chase on this one um, because it's 
it, it's it's weird because it's like an early real time strategy where you command a group of a platoon of like five guys and you don't directly control any of them you have a cursor on screen that you have to uh, move with the d-pad and stuff and select each guy and then give them orders you know tell them go here attack all that fun stuff um it's a little hard to control and the ai is kind of unforgiving in the later levels um and one thing that kind of sucks is i mentioned it's a rts with a cursor on screen it's not compatible with the wacky world's mouse but it's still a fun game and it's a good uh, multiplayer time so up next is a game that we've actually played on the channel, Samurai Showdown. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool SNK fighting game. Um, not much I can say about it. I'm terrible at this type of fighting game and I can't do anything in single player and Chase kicked my ass during, the, during our uh, uh, versus play, um, but it's still a fun game. Up next we have Spider-Man on the Sega Genesis, which I think this is similar to the one that was on Super Nintendo. Um, I actually haven't played it, but uh, who knows? I might play it uh, sometime soon on the channel, so keep an eye out for that. Up next, we have one that um, makes me a little bit confused about the previous one. Uh, Spider-Man for the Sega Genesis, which now that I've grabbed this one, I think this one's actually the one that's based on the, the old cartoon show. Um, but, I mean, there's literally no difference in the name here. It's Spider-Man and Spider-Man. But as you can see from the backs here, the graphics are completely different. So these are two definitely uh, separate games. But there is one other hiccup to the issue here. This is a box that just says Spider-Man, but the game inside is actually uh, Spider-Man Separation Anxiety, where you can play as I think either Spider-Man or Venom. Um, and this game is freaking punishing. This game is impossible to beat. Um, we may play it, um, I'll probably play it, and then get as far as we can uh, until we lose. Um, and then we'll probably, there's like an invincibility code, so we'll probably play through the rest of it uh, while cheating, just to see the end of it. But there you go. Up next is one of my favorite games of all time, and one of the reasons to own a Sega Genesis, Vector Man. This game was actually released pretty late in the... Uh, Sega Genesis life cycle. I think the PS1 had already come out, but this game definitely showed what the Genesis was still capable of. This game pushed the Genesis graphically and uh, sound-wise to its limits, and it is amazing. If you haven't played this game, please go check it out, or at least check out our playthrough. We played through it a couple years ago, um, so it's somewhere in the archive of our channel. Of course, what Sega Collection would be complete without some sports titles. We have uh, Troy Aikman Football, which I actually haven't played. Usually every Super Bowl, our local retro game store will literally just give away sports games for free because they get so many traded in, they're pretty much worthless. Um, so I just grabbed it because, I mean, I used to be, during this era, I was a Cowboys fan. So the Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin, you know, that, that era of Cowboys, I was a fan. So. Who knows, I may, I may force Chase to play it with me, um, he'll probably hate every minute of it, but who knows, it may be fun to watch. Another sports game that you guys have already seen, Triple Play Gold, um, I actually sought this out because I could never remember the name of it. All I could remember was there was this cool baseball game that I used to play with my stepdad. Um, and then one day it just, it just came to me and I remembered the name and I went to our uh, Game Over Games, which is our local retro game store. And lo and behold, they had had it with box, um, full box and manual and everything. Um, and uh, we did play it on the channel. Chase hated it. He's not a sports fan at, all, a fan at all, but I think it was fun to watch and it's fun to play. These are in no particular order, by the way. They're literally just in the order that I grabbed them. Next up is one of another one of my favorite games on the Genesis. And again, another reason to own the Genesis and something you don't get on the Super Nintendo Streets of Rage 2, look at that cover art, that's amazing. Um, but this game is another one that, at least sound-wise, pushed the Sega Genesis to its limits. People say that the FM chip inside the Genesis is terrible. Um, it's only terrible in the wrong hands if you don't know what you're doing. Yuzo Koshiro is a music genius with the Sega Genesis, um, and this is one of the best soundtracks on the Genesis itself. Plus, the game's really fun too. Up next, yet another sports title. NFL Football 94 starring Joe Montana. Now what's significant about this one 
is this is the first NFL game that actually got permission from the NFL Players Association to use players' real names in the game. And all 28 teams, so that's, that's a little bit of history for you, 28 teams. There's 32 teams now. Um, so one thing that does suck is I'm a Jacksonville Jaguars fan. This, made, this was made before they even existed, so I can't play as the Jaguars in this. But um, this also is interesting because this is the first game, uh, sports game series that had full voice commentary. Before the Madden series got John Madden to do voices, they got some guy to do like a really computerized voice to uh, you know commentate over the game, and it's actually pretty impressive. Um, this is another one that I had pretty fond memories of playing with my stepdad when I was a kid. So up next we have Jurassic Park. Uh, what's interesting about this game is it actually follows the book more closely than the movie. In this game, you have Grant going to the power plant instead of Samuel L. Jackson. I can't remember his name, from the character's name from the movie. Um, and there's also a river scene, which wasn't in the movie, but was in the book. And also, um, playing as the raptor is a lot of fun, too. And I am a little rusty now, but I used to be able to beat the raptor section in about six minutes. Um, I do plan on trying to record myself doing that and doing kind of like a, a speed run type deal with this. So look out for that in the future. And the last of my boxed games, I have Earthworm Jim. This is yet another reason to own a Sega Genesis because yes, this game was on the Super Nintendo, but the Sega Genesis actually has a level that was cut from the Super Nintendo version and the music is far superior in this version than the Super Nintendo which is weird. Usually the music is, usually for multi-port games that were on Genesis and Super Nintendo, the Super Nintendo version is better, but the music in this is actually much better. Again, this is one that I've played on the channel, um, played it about two years ago, so it's way back in the archive. So if you want to check it out, go ahead and go look for it. Um, it's very challenging. I would never beat it, um, but it's a lot of fun. I still come back to it every now and then just because it's still fun to play. Moving right along, we have Sports Talk Football starring Joe Montana, which is actually a prequel to the NFL Football 94, so this is actually before that one. Um, and it's called Sports Talk Football because it has the full voice commentary, which I actually haven't, haven't played this version. This is another one I got for free um, during the Super Bowl deal at the local game store. Next up, we have Toy Story which was developed by Traveler's Tales, which you guys might know now from all these LEGO games that come out at least like five a year. But also Traveler's Tales developed Sonic 3D Blast. Um, this game is pretty tough in that almost kind of bad way. Um, I do plan on playing this on the channel just to kind of watch me suffer through trying to play it. But yeah, so look out for that. Up next we have Vector Man 2. The sequel to Vector Man, obviously, which I have not played as much. Um, I probably should play it at least a little bit um, so I can record this on the channel too. I probably won't beat it because I've heard this is even harder than Vector Man 1, which is already a pretty fucking big challenge. Um, so look out for that in the future. Up next we have everyone's favorite licensed game, McDonald's Treasureland Adventure. This one is actually interesting because it was developed by Treasure, um, and it's not bad. I definitely plan on doing a playthrough of this, or at least as much of a playthrough, I probably won't beat it. I never I never plan to beat most of these games anyway, but I definitely plan on playing this on the channel because it's actually kind of good. Up next we have Monopoly, which its label has definitely seen better days, but I want to do a multiplayer version with this with uh, Jess because uh, she always uh, complains that we never play Monopoly with her, um, but that's mainly just because the board game itself takes so much setup, um, but this is all electronics, so you don't have to set up anything besides Sega Genesis, which is always hooked up anyway, as it should be. Coming up next, we have X-Men 2 Clone Wars. Um, I think I've played a little bit of this one. This one's kind of a fairly recent addition to the collection that I haven't had a chance to play around with, um, but I definitely plan on playing this on the channel, because if I remember, this is actually a pretty fun game. Up next we have Jurassic Park Rampage Edition, which I don't really know the history about this one because it doesn't follow the movies at all. Um, you can still play as either Grant or the Raptor, but 
it's basically kind of an improved version of the other uh, Jurassic Park game. But I don't know what actually why they made this. <laughs> like, I mean, it's a better game, but still, I don't know what what actually inspired them to make this game. Whatever. Up uh, next, we have an interesting cartridge, the Genesis Six Pack, which actually has a pretty good list of games on it. Um, it has Sonic the Hedgehog, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage One. Revenge of Shinobi, Columns, and Super Hang-On. And if you go back uh, a little bit and watch my Revenge of Shinobi playthrough, I actually played it from this cartridge. Um, so this is kind of a, it's a neat little uh, collector's item. It's one of my favorite in my collection. Up next, we have another one that I've already played on the channel, Vapor Trail, with its very minimalistic uh, label. I'm not much of a fan of shooters, but I actually really enjoyed this one. Um, it's kind of no frills, it's not very popular, but it seems like not many people know about it because it's kind of hard to find information about it, but if you see it out in the wild, uh, go ahead and pick it up. It's actually a pretty solid shooter. Next up we have Light Crusader, which this cartridge is probably in better shape than most of my other cartridges. Um, I think this one was recently donated by our roommate, uh, Patrick, and I'm going to claim it unless he says otherwise. Um, but this is actually pretty cool because he wants me to play it on this channel and I definitely plan to. Um, this is a, actually a pretty cool uh, isometric action RPG for the Sega Genesis. And there aren't very many good RPGs on the Sega Genesis. But I definitely plan on checking this one out. Up uh, next we have Primal Rage. I remember playing this a little bit in the arcade. Um, and this kind of banked on the... And this kind of banked on the... Uh, Mortal Kombat craze of digitized uh, actors where you know they're obviously like stop-motion actors in this but it's a fighting game and this one requires the six button controller but it's a lot of fun I definitely want to play this with Chase. Next up we have Miss Pac-Man which is another one I didn't know had a Genesis version um, it's obviously by Tenjin which, as most of you should know, this is actually a division uh, of Atari that Atari basically used in order to get uh, NES games on the NES uh, because Nintendo basically barred Atari from ever making games, so they created kind of a shadow company called Tengen in order to do that. But anyway, Ms. Pac-Man, I've always loved Ms. Pac-Man. I definitely want to play this. Um, what's cool about this is this has a co-op mode, so I, d I want to play co-op uh, with this with Pinko. So look out for that in the future. Next up we have Eternal Champions, which uh, from my research, apparently did the super violent blood and gore and stuff before Mortal Kombat. Um, and this is kind of a lost uh, Sega franchise, um, which they basically didn't do anything with after the 16-bit genre, along with uh, Vector Man and Streets of Rage. but. Um, it's actually one of the most recent uh, games that I bought. I actually just bought this about a week ago. Um, I haven't had a chance to play it, but again, I plan on getting my butt kicked by Chase uh, while playing this, so look out for that in the future. Up next, even more sports games, World Series Baseball. I actually bought this in kind of a, a box pack with a bunch of other bunch of these other Genesis games. Um, it happened to come with it. Um, I don't really, I'm not really a fan of baseball, but I'm kind of a fan of baseball games, or at least older games. Um, so I may force Chase to play this with me, like I did with Triple Play. And also, World Series Baseball 98, which is, if you think about it, is kind of interesting because by 1998, the PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and in the Nintendo 64 were already on the market. I don't know why they released a baseball game in 1998, but I actually got this in my search for that baseball game that I was trying to find that I played with my stepdad, which turned out to be Triple Play Gold. But this actually is not a bad baseball game. So again, just to make Chase miserable, I may force him to play more baseball games with me. Up next, we have the oddly shaped cartridge series, starting off with Urban Strike, which is part of the EA Strike series, uh, with, which is Urban Strike, Desert Strike, and Jungle Strike. Uh, I haven't played the other ones. This one's really hard. I've never passed the second level um, because you have to manage your fuel levels for your helicopter. And the second level is just a bunch of like uh, ocean oil drill driller rigs and you have to fly in between them and I haven't learned the layout and so I usually run out of fuel before I can even get anywhere. But I may play this on the channel just so I can show it off and 
show you guys how hard it is. Um, but anyway, up next is Combat Cars, which turned out to be really cheap. It's kind of a simple racing game, but this actually has one of the most rocking soundtracks I've ever heard on the Genesis. And I bought it literally for that. I think I got this for 50 cents off of Amazon um, and totally worth it. Up next, yet another sports game that I haven't really played all that much, John Madden Football 92. I, I honestly don't even remember why I have this. I've had this since before high school, um, and I don't know where it came from. Also, it's an EA cartridge, but the yellow thing that's supposed to go here fell off. It fell off before I even got it. Um, so yeah, I may play this in the future, I don't know. And bringing the video to a close, last but not least, is Road Rash 2. This actually is my second favorite Road Rash. I've never actually played Road Rash 1. I freaking love this game. This is a very close behind Road Rash 3. The only reason I like Road Rash 3 is because of the weapon variety and like the more variety in cars on the road. But this one, I like its simplicity. Um, so it's definitely still fun and I find myself going back to it uh, every now and then. So that does it for the Sega Genesis collection. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you watched it this far. I'm sure this video is probably going to be pretty long. Um, my collection, my Sega Genesis collection has kind of grown on me without me realizing. I didn't realize how many games I had. Um, anyway, if you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Also follow us on Twitter at Noiseless Mound. If you want to support us on Patreon so we can help keep our collection going, um, that is linked down in the description. And also there's a link to our Discord server, so you can stop by and say hi. Thanks for watching.